Madden NFL is the most successful football game of all time. Much like John Madden himself, the game ran over its competitors in its early life and quickly grew to an almost mythical stature, and no one's quite sure why. Across its now 30 releases at the time of recording, the Madden franchise has depicted nearly all of the greatest players ever. But this video isn't about them. It's about one of the darker secrets Electronic Arts has tried to hide from you for years. The Madden Curse. That's the question we've set out to answer. Is the Madden Curse real? Madden was first published in 1988 under the name John Madden Football and has been a yearly release ever since with the exception of 89. John Madden graced the cover for the first 11 years, sometimes joined by players like Barry Sanders or Eric Williams, but Eddie George was the first athlete to get the cover solo in 2000. We're going to start there. Looking back, the Madden curse may have started in those early days, we'll figure that out later, but the discovery of the curse, as with most things, started with the advent of social media. So let's start by comparing the numbers of the game's first solo cover athlete, Eddie George. Eddie was given the honor of being the first solo player after his tremendous 99 season when he rushed for 1,300 yards and 9 scores and added 500 yards and 4 TDs through the air. Then in 2000, he only got better, rushing for 1,500 yards and 14 TDs and matched his production in the passing game. So the curse is not off to a good start with its first cover star. However, there's more to this than just raw numbers before and after he was given the cover. And this is something we'll be going back to a lot. In the 2000 playoffs, Eddie rushed for nearly 500 yards and three scores as he helped guide Tennessee to the Super Bowl, which they lost to the Rams. Despite his numbers being terrific the year after his image plastered the illustrious cover, he never reached those heights again, playing in just five more playoff games in his next five years and averaging a paltry 65 yards a game in those contests. Of course, we're not going to go through every single player like this, but the story of Eddie George pre and post cover is pretty representative of most of the athletes that have been given the dubious honor of headlining one of the biggest sports games on the planet. Let's run through some names quickly. Dante Culpepper starred in 2000, making the Pro Bowl after throwing for nearly 4,000 yards and 33 TDs and adding 7 on the ground, while leading the Vikings to an 11-5 record. He missed five games due to injury the year after and never had a winning record as a quarterback again. Marshall Falk had been named first team All-Pro for his third year in a row when EA called him up in 2002. After leading the league in yards per attempt, yards per game, and rushing plus receiving touchdowns, he never put up more than 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns, or 75 yards a game after that. Michael Vick was the hottest athlete on the planet in 2003 and arguably the most dominant Madden player of all time when he graced the cover that year. After a Pro Bowl season at just 22 years old, Vick missed 11 games due to injury. Donovan McNabb was given the 2005 cover after making five straight Pro Bowls, throwing for a career-high 3,900 yards and 31 touchdowns and leading the Eagles to an absurd 13-2 record. He had missed one game that season. The year after, he missed seven games with injury. He only made one more Pro Bowl and two more playoff appearances in the final seven years of his career. Now we come to my boy Sean Alexander on the cover of Madden 07. Alexander absolutely set the league on fire in the 05-06 season, rushing 370 times for 1,880 yards and what was then an all-time record 27 touchdowns on the ground. The Seahawks made the Super Bowl and lost to the Steelers. The year after he was given the cover, he missed six games due to injury. He never played another full season again. He retired just three years after he was featured, rushing for a combined 1,600 yards and 11 touchdowns in 27 games. It's important to mention, though, that Alexander was 28 in the 2005 season. It's common knowledge in football that 30 is the dead age for running backs, so it would only be natural that Alexander's production would fall off a cliff as he approached that landmark, right? Does that mean the Madden curse is just coincidence and the natural progression of careers? Well, as it turns out, we can explain all that. Let's get broader here. We examine the numbers of every single cover star since Eddie George to see if we could find any trends. 
we examined just the two most important stats of every offensive player featured. We didn't track the stats of the three defensive players featured, as there really isn't one comparison metric between all defensive positions. We compiled the pass yards for quarterbacks, rush yards for running backs, and receiving yards for receivers, as well as touchdowns for each. Obviously, it's not an exhaustive list, but these two numbers should give us at least a general idea as to what's going on. First off, quarterbacks. On average, their yard has dropped nearly 600 yards in the season after their cover appearance, and they threw seven fewer touchdowns. As for running backs, their dip was almost identical at 525 yards and seven touchdowns season over season. Although, of course, they account for far fewer yards to begin with, so this difference is even more pronounced. Finally, the receivers seemed less affected, but their production still fell by 150 yards and two touchdowns after their crowning achievement. So that's it, right? Done and dusted, Madden Curse is real? Well, as with everything else, there's some nuance here. I never told you the average age of cover stars, which you would think is important. The average Madden cover star was 27 years old in the season when they earned the honor, although Tom Brady and Brett Favre drive this number up, as they were 39 and 38 respectively in their years. Running back's average age was also 27, but remember they hit their primes before age 30. That receiver decline I mentioned? Well that only exists because Rob Gronkowski missed 7 games with injury in his follow-up season. If you take him out, receiver's numbers actually only went down by 37 yards and less than one touchdown year over year. And finally, we get to the most important aspect of the Madden curse. Injury. Since Eddie George, there have been 20 cover athletes for mainline games. Of that 20, 9 of them missed significant games the following year with injury. You're looking at almost half of the men portrayed on football's greatest poster board suffering serious injuries the next year. So let's recap. Some players had a significant decline the season after they were put on the Madden cover and, on average, players' production seemed to go down after being on the cover. Nearly 50% of players suffered injuries the next year. But does this mean the Madden curse is real? Well, let me ask you this. Is the MVP curse real? Over the last five seasons, every single MVP winner has failed to match their MVP numbers the following season. Three of them still made the Pro Bowl, but none of them could match those heights. Why? Because it's really, really hard. Peyton Manning won MVP in 2013 by throwing for 5,500 yards and 55 touchdowns. The next season, he threw for 4,700 yards and 39 TDs. Did he have an MVP curse? Well, that's exactly what happens with the Madden cover stars. Of course, Sean Alexander was never going to repeat his 27 touchdown season. And in reality, the 370 carries he suffered through that season caused injuries that lingered the rest of his career. When Peyton Hillis was shockingly given the cover spot in Madden 12, he had just run 270 times the season before, after having shouldered all of 81 combined carries in the two seasons prior. Which cover star's production never went down, you ask? Tom Brady threw for over 1,000 more yards after his cover appearance in Madden 18. He won the MVP that year, and then his production returned to normal the year after. Receivers don't feel that brunt as badly because if their quarterbacks don't change, they can still produce over multiple seasons. But across the history of Madden, we see significant declines in numbers for almost every position group year over year. Of course we do. In order to be a Madden cover star, you have to have a transcendent year where people take notice of your production. But no one can keep that production up for multiple years. Why is this difference more pronounced in the early years? Well, without social media, there were only a handful of players that captured national attention. Remember, Madden stars need to be marketable above all else. Therefore, players needed to have even better years than you would need now to be nationally recognized which just increases the chance they fail to produce again or just get hurt from the strain they went through. Larry Fitzgerald was the first receiver to get his image on the cover of Madden in 2009. He had 1,400 yards and 12 TDs that year. Six years later, Odell Beckham Jr. was given the honor after his rookie year when he recorded just 1,300 yards and 12 TDs in a much more passing-oriented league. But he was a marketable star with otherworldly athleticism that was featured almost daily on social media. So at the end of the day, is the Madden curse real? I'd have to say no. It's all a case of players having tremendous years and then having good but not incredible years the season after. You can chalk up the injuries to the increased usage guys get when they have these years. 
increases that are often dramatic compared to their previous years. So if you want to still believe in the Madden curse, and that's why Pat Mahomes isn't getting you the fantasy points he did last year or something, then you can. But for the rest of us, we'll just have to go watch Blair Witch or something for our Supernatural film. Nothing fake about that. 